Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. I am excited for my guest today because this woman has been instrumental in my own thyroid journey and I know that she has been instrumental in millions of others' hypothyroid journey. She has been a pioneer when it comes to getting the right information in the hands of the patients when it comes to hypothyroidism. For 20 years, Janie Bothorpe suffered at the hands of doctors who failed to see the connection between her chronic and debilitating symptoms and being on Synthroid for her hypothyroidism. But Bothorpe proved them all wrong in 2002. She switched to natural desiccated thyroid raised and found her optimal amount and every single debilitating symptom went completely away. That change spurred her to create the patient to patient movement later called Stop the Thyroid Madness, AKA STTM. The website stopthethyroidmadness.com is a compilation of years of patient experiences and wisdom causing changed lives with the solid information as well as shifts in the way many doctors treat their thyroid patients. So welcome Janie to the show. Thank you. I'm very glad to be here. Oh, I'm so happy to talk to you. I really just feel like, like you, you've create, you created a movement. You single, you little, you little cute, you. <laughs> Isn't she sweet? If you're not, if you're listening to the podcast, go to the video cast. She looks absolutely adorable. You created this movement, and if it wasn't for you getting as sick as you did, I don't think it would have happened, would it? Probably not. No. So tell us your story because your story is, it was so long and so hard what you went through. Um, so if you could just give us a recap for, for those that, you know, don't know your story, what, what happened to you so long ago? Well, something started going wrong, <clears throat> excuse me, right before the birth of my second child. Um, I was feeling really weird and I didn't have that with the first child. And by the way, it's common to reveal hypothyroidism, whether, um, Hashis or non Hashis around the birth of a child. <clears throat> Mine was. So, you, you too? Yep. Even though, just a minute. <clears throat> Excuse me. I always have a frog, and I think it's from milk. I'm going to have to get off uh, milk products. Um, even though it can happen at any time in your life, that's just common. Well, there I was. I finally had the birth of my second child, and I was sick. I mean, I was, I was nursing, and I was sick and sick and sick and sick. The whole time I was nursing, I would catch one thing. And then I'd, I'd, you know, catch something else, and I thought, "What is this?" Um, and then uh, the same scenario happened with my third child. I was at a baby, um, I was nursing, and I was constantly sick. I would get a, a cold and get well, get another cold and get well, get cold and get well, and then I both times end up with pneumonia. So something wasn't right, um, and I thought I just needed to literally exercise more. I didn't yes. need to eat less, but on my own, I thought, oh, "Okay, I'm going to become a." Uh, uh, an aerobic instructor, and I'm going to teach other people how to be healthy with exercise, and it killed me. I, I couldn't do it. I, I had horrible reactions after every class. Um, <clears throat> my heart rate wouldn't fall. I would, my, my heart would be pounding. It would never recover. Um, I was exhausted, and by the time I went to bed, I just felt like I'd been run over, and I was sweating profusely. It, it was very much like what's called dysautonomia, an overreaction of the autonomic nervous system. It was terrible. So I had to quit my profession in, in, uh, in exercise, uh, helping people do it. And finally, I was diagnosed with borderline hypothyroidism, which is mm. a misnomer. It's, a misnomer. It, there's no, it's not, you're, you're hypo, you're not. Yeah. And I was put at that time on Synthroid and nothing changed. I went year after year after year with problems, same problems, nothing changed. And I kept complaining and they said, oh, well, let's just change you to Lavoxyl. That's another, by the way, Synthroid and Lavoxyl is one of five hormones. It's T4, it's a storage hormone. Um, and I was changed to Lavoxyl, didn't do a thing. It was just like a sugar pill. And I kept getting worse. It wasn't that it didn't do anything. I was also getting worse. Every year that went by, I was getting worse. And I got to the point where... I couldn't even, I had a little project I was working on. I'm into art and I had a little wood project. I was sitting on the couch, sanding my little wood project and I would get those horrible symptoms of sweating and horrible fatigue and pounding heart. I thought, what in the world? So finally, this is, now we're into the 1990s and there's not much out there. You know, the internet wasn't big yet. And I had to, I even wrote 
uh, medical school students. I found a list of medical school students and uh, maybe there was email by then. Um, I don't remember. I think there might have been saying, what do you Not think? Much. Uh, yeah, there wasn't much. What do you think this is? And none of them. Mm -mm. So I just kind of like, excuse my language, to hell with everything. I know I'm hypothyroid. It's got to be related. So on my own, I found out about at the time, we're going to have to talk about that because it's changed. I found out about desiccated thyroid, which is pig thyroid. And pig thyroid has all five hormones, T4, T3, T2, T1, and calcitonin. Um, and I found a nurse practitioner to put me on it, but she wouldn't let me raise it. So I, I knew that wasn't enough. So I found a second one to let me raise it. And she pretty much let me do it on my own. My life made a complete turnaround. So in summary, that was the beginning of me being mad as hell that I had to go that long being told it's not your thyroid and had to have all these painful tests, including a biopsy of my left biceps, bicep because they thought it was a muscle problem. And I figured it out on my own. Yeah. And here we are 30 years later, Janie, and has much changed? 17 years later. 17 well, years later. I guess you could say 30 19. years later after I found out I was hypothyroid. But I, yes. But it's been, I've been doing this now for 17 years. But since the 1990s, so 30 years, has much changed? I don't think so. Like what you went through, I hear that story on a daily basis. I went to my doctor, I was put on Synthroid, I was put on Levothyroxine. Well, look, yes and no. <laughs> I mean, today, even though what still seems like the majority of doctors are clueless, there now are some that are listening. You see, um, what I did back then is I started a group and Yahoo was the place you talk. This is before, uh, before Facebook. And I started this group because I was so mad and, and desiccated thyroid had changed my life so drastically. I thought we got to talk. So I formed this group and people were coming in. Now back then there weren't a lot of groups at all. No. There was one or two and people saw my group and they formed their own little group, but people were coming in left and right. Um, so I said, look, here's my story and desiccated thyroid changed my life. Something is wrong with the medical community that we're all going this long. And my mother suffered your mothers and fathers. I was saying to them, you, you all may have suffered. Something's wrong. So luckily in that group I started and that was uh, 2002. Um, I think that's right. <clears throat> I, 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 I'm so lucky that I, I got it in my head. Let's don't go by opinion. We're all in here, people are coming in. Let's figure some things out on our own. Let's do a patient to patient thing because we can't go by doctors. They've been keeping us sick and telling us it's not our thyroid and going by the TSH and prescribing T4. Well, thank God I did that because 17 years later, I've got all this information patient to patient on how we got well. And a lot of it is totally against what is still going on in some places. So real quickly, what has changed? Some things have changed. There are now more doctors who prescribe it. Now we're going to have to talk about that. Yes, we are. Yeah. <laughs> problem with desiccated thyroid today. Who would have guessed? <clears throat> but more of them are open to it. But what happens is like this. Through the years, they'll get this right. And then they come over here and they don't get this right anymore. Mm -hmm. And then they might get that right. And then they're scared to death and they're not going to get this right. It's like, they're so messed up. They're scared to death of T3. Yeah. There's still some people that go by the TSH, some doctors, even though there are some that are better. It's just hard to find them, but they're mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And the common thing that you hear is that T3 is dangerous. I mean, I was just in with my doctor a few weeks ago who she herself has a reverse T3 issue and is on T3 only, who was horrified that I was taking more than 25 micrograms a day. And I said, and she's lovely. And I actually said to her, listen, I did this advanced thyroid series. Would you want to listen to it? And I, you know, I've got information about this. Could I give it to you? And she said, yes, I would love to read about it. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> right. But that's pretty rare because they think it's going to give you a heart attack, that you're going to get osteoporosis, that this is just, she could not believe that my heart rate wasn't skyrocketed. They don't get it. Every, I mean, come on. 
every human being and animal releases some direct T3. That's not dangerous. Every, every, well, all of us, when our thyroids are healthy, your cat, your dog, those animals out there are all getting direct T3. That's not dangerous. Now, now granted, in response to what you just said, when I started this movement and it was just about us, let's talk, some people were experimenting, let's share what we're learning. Yeah, I recognize that we gotta be careful. Um, we, we, if we're gonna do this and when the medical community is so bad, we gotta be responsible. So we were responsible. Um, and everything about Stop the Thyroid Madness is about how responsible we were and how we got well. So no, the opposite is true. We found that out by our experiences. If you don't have enough T3, guess what? You get heart problems. Not everybody, but you get heart problems. The heart needs T3. If you don't have enough T3, you get osteopenia, which is a precursor to osteoporosis. Your, your, your brain needs T3. Every organ in your body needs T3. What's dangerous about that? Mm -hmm. Now they're counting on T4 converting. So why can we not count on that? There are, well, you know, I didn't convert. Clearly I didn't convert. I, yeah, I, I didn't either. Um, yet I did fine with it in NDT, by the way. I want people to hear that. Mm -hmm. um, um, we found out, we didn't know exactly why. Why were some of us doing so lousy? Because some do a little better. They're going to have problems, but they do a little better. Why do some convert better than others? Um, we think that now, especially the last, let's say, t seven years, genetics. You know, I haven't looked closely at my own uh, because I'm so busy. I, I, do, I did the genetics. I need to find out. But there are genetics mm -hmm. that are going to negatively affect your ability to convert T4. I think that was me. Mm -hmm. And then we found out, oh, my God, there's so many things that can neg negatively affect your ability to convert T4. Estrogen can um, negatively affect it. Um, um, your iron, if you have inadequate iron, your T4 will convert to RT3. Um, there are all sorts of medications that can affect your ability to convert T4. Stress can uh, convert T4 to T3. Stress can do it. Getting older to, can do it. So I started com you know, combining, listing as we were learning all these things. So as a result, guess what, folks? If you're doing well on T4, or you think you are, there's too many, the flu, being sick, the flu can affect your conversion to T3. Wow. There's a lot of things out there that will get you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can anybody do well on T4 only? Have you seen it in your practice? Yeah, yeah, well, my, my practice. I'm just, a, I'm just a patient. But yeah. um, in the 17 years that I've been doing this, yes, there do appear to be some people who are better than others. And, but there's a big but, and I'm going to explain that to you. There's a but, for example... I used to own an antique store and this is right about right before the, I was writing the first book. I had to quit because I could spend too much time doing this. And this girl came in and she's cute. And I remember she had dark hair, really short and real bubbly. And she was walking around the antique store that we owned and, and somehow we got in discussion and she mentioned she was on Synthroid. I went, Oh, um, so I said, can I ask you some questions? Cause I was just about ready to write the first book. And I said, well, have you noticed this? No. Have you noticed this? No. I mean, I probably asked 12 different questions. Have you had this problem? No. Then I hit one. I said, well, what about this? She goes, oh, I do have that problem. And I do know that what I asked her were hypothyroid problems. So then it hit me that some people, when they're doing better, they can still have a problem that isn't manifest in their energy level. And she was a happy person, but she still had this problem. Then there was a guy um, he and his wife had sold antiques. That man, he's probably 50 and he could run circles around me with energy. I thought he's on Synthroid. She told me he was on Synthroid. He's another one. Well, guess what? What you didn't know is he had to take a nap every day, even though he ran circles around me, his cholesterol was high. So the tactful part of you know, those are examples that no, sometimes people aren't doing as good as they think. They think. That, that, that there may be some, but I think it's more rare than you think. But a lot of people also, and I say this tactfully, think they're doing great and they're not. And they're not. There are, there are problems and they're only going to get worse as you age. Yeah. So I would tell you, is there some that are doing great? Maybe quite a minority, but the majority are not. Yes, I know. I, ha I have yet to meet anyone, <laughs> but I'm sure they're out there somewhere. Well, they say they are. That's yes. All I
Yeah. Now, and I want to kind of, I want to go back to causes of hypothyroidism and conversion issues. But first, I think just being on this topic about the medication, uh, there's been a lot of change with medication lately, and I've heard you talk about it. And so what is your, like NDT used to be the go-to, maybe not anymore? You know, it, it, it was the go-to and, and I, I'm not a shy to tell you that's what I strongly recommended because it made sense. Five, all five hormones that your own thyroid would be producing. That's what we were yeah. getting. And porcine is very compatible with human tissue. It made sense to use porcine, even though there's, there's also bovine. I promoted it. And, you know, in the early years I had people say, well, how dare you? Well, I don't care. It changed lives. It changed my life and it's changed lives. And armor was the, the main one. Um, Nature Thoid was all, all, you know, always there, but more people went to armor because you could just stick it under your tongue and people did notice a little bit more of a, you know, but, you know, it, it didn't make a difference rather than swallowing, even though swallowing works. It was wonderful. When the process of change of all the NDTs began in 2009. Um, that was when armor started changing. People who had done wonderful on it were seeing a return of their hypothyroid symptoms. Um, there was another change a few years after that, um, and it, it got even worse. It was bought out. Forest is still around, but it's like a subsidiary of another pharmaceutical. It changed, um, and people weren't doing quite as well. Um, and then the next one, if I have this right, was IRFA in Canada, because a lot of us were allowed mm, by the FDA to get IRFA from Canada, which I did. I had a lot of the older armor, but I moved to IRFA, and it worked just like armor then it changed. Uh, it wasn't working anymore. So then we started moving over. Uh, a lot of people were more interested in Nature Thoid again. And Westroid, Westroid used to be out there more, but then it became WP. And people liked WP because it didn't have as many fillers. I went to NP Thyroid. And of course, I'm, I speak what I speak about. It was great. And I told people, it's great. Doesn't mean you can't be on the others. Uh, and I said, I liked NP because it was like the old armor. You could, it would dissolve in your mouth. You could do it sublingually, work great. Um, so back a year or two, Nature Thoid's the next one that changed. Uh, it changed by uh, 2018. They were, ran out of it and they said they were up doing their machinery. Mm, it came back out and everybody saw a return of their hypo. Including and, you? No, I wasn't on Nature Thoid. I preferred the NDT that you could dissolve. Right, and, okay. didn't, and it didn't have a lot of sweet. Um, so it changed for the worst. And then we didn't know about WP, but now we're seeing a lot of evidence that it's changed. People are seeing their hypo come back. Oh, and finally, MP thyroid changed. It came back out and or it was always there. And it, it changed. Pro it was probably changing in the summer, by the way. My husband was on it. It did not have the specs in it that it does now. It was not a different size tablet. And strangely, he was seeing fatigue in the late afternoon. I went, that's strange. That's a hypothyroid symptom. Well, it had been changing before, you, before it changed phys, uh, visually. And then it came out with a visual change. And I would say to you, based on observations that I do and patient reports, it is now the worst desiccated thyroid out there. So they all changed. Now, <clears throat> how, how do you think they're changing it? Do you know that? Do you, do you know the answer to that? They will admit to nothing. Right. And, um, all of them. I mean, I heard we changed nothing from IRFA. I heard we changed nothing from Nature Thoid. It's still going on. And I think, I'm guessing that Acela, which makes NP thyroid, which is now to me the worst one around, being the best, going to the worst. They, it's almost like they were forced to admit. I don't know. They just look, they had to admit they're now using a source of porcine from Europe, whatever that means. Uh, but I, I just find that strange, you know, because also now there's specs in the tablet that also occurred with Nature Thoid. Nature Thoid. Um, NP being now the worst, uh, apparently smells horrible now. I mean, people said it smells horrible. It's, it tastes horrible. It's got those specs in it. Uh, there are some people that are getting burning down their throat, burning in their stomach, nausea. They've all changed. And so do we think they're using different kind of pig or are they adding, like, don't, don't they have to claim that they're putting something different into a medication? Wouldn't you think? Wouldn't you think? Yes. Could it cause, like, have you heard anybody say that they were, they were optimized on NDT or one of those other ones 
and then suddenly their reverse T3 went up? Well, you have to understand about reverse T3. You know, reverse T3 has always had a tendency to go up even before all these changes. And later we need to talk about armor again because yeah. it's the only one. But you're, you're, you're going to see, and this is based on observation. I, I've been, everybody's been a guinea pig and giving me information and I've been reporting it when it was consistent. The first cause of higher T3 is going to be inadequate iron. And guess what? You're going to, iron's going to fall if you've been on T4 most of the time um, or if you've been underdosing yourself on even an NDT. Second, inflammation will drive RT3 up. Third, high cortisol will drive RT3 up. So it's always been out there. Mm -hmm. By the way, for those listening who haven't been listening to Karen's other uh, uh, podcasts okay. yet, um, <clears throat> RT3 is an inactive hormone. And if you got the flu, I guarantee you, your body's going to start converting T4 to RT3 to slow down your metabolism so that your body can concentrate on healing you. If you're in a car accident and you're injured, your body's going to start converting the T4 to RT3 to slow you down so it can help heal you. Well, the same thing happens with low iron, uh, inflammation, and high cortisol. Sometimes low, but mostly high. So it's a, it's a common factor. Are we seeing it more with the changed NDTs? Yes. Yes. I wondered that. Yeah. Curious. Yeah. What about URFA? Where does URFA stand? Still bad. Now, that... now, let me add here though. Okay. You're still going to see people saying, I'm doing great. Mm -hmm. I'm doing great on URFA. I'm doing great on Natrethoid. I'm doing great. Mm -mm. Uh, we ask more questions when they're doing great because I'm open-minded. I want to know. Tell me yeah. about your it doesn't fit because most of them are underdosing themselves. Yeah. You can, you're going to feel good before you're optimal. You're going to feel good. And a lot of people, when they feel good, they think, oh, I've arrived. Um, and you might feel a little bit good on these changed NDTs, but if you don't get optimal, it's going to backfire. Most of these people who say they feel good are not optimal. Just a matter of time or, and they get mad about this, but it's what we see. When you are on an inadequate treatment, whether it's the natural desiccated thyroid now, there's only one that might work, which we'll talk about, mm -hmm. or if you are <clears throat> underdosed, um, I forgot where I was going. <laughs> it's all the time. <laughs> My brain goes a million miles an hour. That's why I'm good at doing all this. Where was I going? Um, oh, they say they're feeling good, but yes. we that, that they may feel good. It's a matter of time. So, right. I remember because well, Canada ran out of IRFA last spring, I think it was, or they were about to run out of it. There was a shortage. There was all this talk on the internet about it. And my naturopath at the time, I had just been newly diagnosed and he was like, you know what? They're trying to give people um, compounded T3, T4 instead of IRFA. And he said, but we, and he said, we, we, we've been trying it. And he's like, we, we do not get the results that we get from IRFA. So we're just waiting for it to come back in. But just so you know, if you can get IRFA, get it because we're not seeing the same results with the compounded T3, T4. And then time went on and it's just interesting because now you're, there's more talk now about some people feeling that IRFA is suddenly changed their medication or something that they're suddenly getting their hypo symptoms back. So it's just interesting. So what is it that you're recommending then? This has been hard because I've know. spent all these years filing <laughs> all this information about how to use NDT. Okay. First of all, what I want everybody to hear, I'm going to tell you what is out there that, that you can use that can work. But you've got to remember, it's not just about how you feel. So when I tell you these things, you also have to get optimal. And I was preaching that about NDT. In fact, I have more of that about being optimal in the updated revision. I wish I had the book here. I know I've got the oh, it's revised way edition, but not, not the updated. updated. <laughs> now I got to get the updated. updated yeah, yeah. Got to get the updated one because I mentioned being optimal. What is optimal? It is not just by how you feel. Optimal, and this is 17 years of seeing this, is having your free T3 at the top part of the range. Didn't say an exact number, just the top part. And your free T4 around mid-range or just a smidgen higher. That's optimal. What's the significance of that? When I'm mentioning labs, you don't lose your feel-goods. If you're lower than that, 
in your own time, you're going to lose your feel goods because lower than that, it's not meeting your daily, weekly, monthly, yearly needs. You're going to, it's going to come back. It's just an individual about when it comes back. So here are the alternatives. Okay, One, can, just a minute though. One second, because I'll lose my train of thought if I don't say it. Oh, no, I <laughs> I'm horrible. I'm in perimenopause. Things just jump out of my brain. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I want to just speak to you this quickly is, it, it, what about body temperature? Because if you're someone like me, and I've seen it in other people who my, when you looked at my ranges a year ago, they were exactly what you just said. Actually, my T3 was over range for a while. And in the beginning, I felt amazing, the best I had ever felt. My temps were great. Um, I saw that my, my ranges were super high. So I was like, hey, I'm, I'm golden. And then suddenly it was like a light switch went on or off, I should say off. And I was severely hypothyroid and had someone just looked at my T3, T4 and TSH, I would look like I was over medicated and should be hyper or if anything, but that I was extremely optimized. But my RT3 had just gone up just a smidge. Like it was still in range. It was at like 19 or 20 and it was over 25 but is considered out of range. And I went severely hypothyroid. So my labs didn't reflect that I was optimized, even though it looked like I was. Well, now there was something going on you weren't catching because I have a lot of people say, oh, but I'm optimal. And I say, well, let me hear your free T3, your free T4 and your RT3 and one of them's off. Right. For example, <clears throat> we don't want to forget to talk about the alternatives. Yeah. You are not, and I just did a, I just did a graphic on this on the Stop the Thyroid Madness Facebook page, by the oh, way. Oh, great. Okay. That's not right. You're not optimal if your free T3 is at the top of the range and your free T4 is low. That's not optimal. They need to both be optimal to be optimal. Now, I'm talking about having both T3 and T4 in your treatment. If you have T4 and T3 in your treatment and your free T3 is up there or higher like yours was and your free T4 is low, you have a cortisol problem. That's what mm -hmm. that's revealing. It's pooling. Mm -hmm. um, or you're, you're not optimal if they're either one of them are too high. I mean, yes, people, their free T3 can go slightly above range, but if your free T4 is higher than slightly above that mid range, so you're, you're on too much. Some people mm -hmm. are just on too much. And when you're on too much, guess what happens? The body tries to compensate and will convert that T4 to RT3 to try to clear it out. Right. So I, yeah. I wasn't, we, you, you and I didn't know each other then, but if you had showed me your lab, shown me your labs, I would have said, nope, look at this. You're not optimal. Right, right. Yeah, that's good. That's a good thing to note, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The importance of just checking that reverse T3 is so key. you got to, and we've, you've got to test free T3, not total. Yeah. T4 yeah. and RT3 mm -hmm. to know what's going on. Doctors you, can't test for RT3 in Canada. Just yes, so. Yes, can you can test for it, but your doctor can't. Your, your naturopath will. You have to order it. You have to pay for it. And there's no lab in Canada that tests reverse T3. They send, it to, they send it to California. Yeah. Bad. Okay. So back to the, back to the desiccated okay. dilemma. <laughs> so let's talk about what to do today. Yeah. There are so many options. Um, contrary to what your doctor told you, you can make the two synthetics work if you get optimal. Mm. Excuse me. And if your RT3, if you corrected the reasons the RT3 goes up, again, if you get your free T3 at the top part of the range, your free T4 right around mid, just so you can go smidgen over, you can feel great, even on the two synthetics. But watch that RT3. Make sure everything else is corrected that that doesn't go up. That's number one. Number two, you can choose to go on T3 only. Um, it is a rougher treatment because you, you a lot of people, you'll, they'll notice it starting to run out after about, about four, uh, three, four hours. So you've got to multi-dose it. Most people do. The only people that don't have to multi-dose it generally are those that have been on it a long time. And this is what John, Dr. John C. Lowe felt like, that the tissues start storing some of that T3 and they'll release itself. I don't know if that's true, mm -hmm. but he was on T3 only at one time. He got to the point where he did that. Um, number three, guess what? Armor may still work for a lot of people. Um, yes, it did change. It, it was horrible. Everybody got hypo. I think they did something to bring something back, back then. It used to be, they made it extremely hard, then they softened it again. 
and people were doing a little better. But you had to figure out if you can make armor work and get optimal. Don't forget, if you're going to go to armor, you got to get optimal. But some people can't get optimal. They have problems on armor. It's like right now, we're just going to say it's a 50-50 deal. This mm. can get optimal. This cannot. So these people, excuse me, I just spit right into the... Into the <laughs> you, just, you just spit on me? <laughs> <laughs> they add T3 to it. Um, so your, your T4 may not get optimal. That's okay. Um, when you add T3 to it, because you won't be able to raise armor to get the T4 optimal, free T4, but you can get that free T3 optimal because that's the best hormone anyway. That's mm -hmm. what gives you good energy and haha, it helps you lose weight. Some people, not all, makes it changes your life. So that's number three, armor by itself. You can see if you can get optimal, I have to underscore that all the time because so many people don't get that. I know. Or yeah. add T3 to armor. That's number three. So number four is compounded. Now, I have never cared about compounded. Um, it's, it was, it's always been too expensive compared to prescription NDT. That was back then. Um, and there were, there were complaints by some people that the slow release T3 would run out. They would feel hypo in the late afternoon because it's just a man-made. It's usually adding cellulose to slow its release. I've never, never went the compounded route, but mm -hmm. I think now you, that's number four. You can consider it. Um, because the uh, compounders have a different source of porcine powder. There mm -hmm. is a source of por porcine specifically for those who compound. It's a different source than what the pharmaceuticals were getting and now are getting, which is who knows what it is. Um, so you, it, it's working. Now, I'm going to add to you, this is just me. Yeah. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be on ND. ND NDT anytime soon. I may. I've got time to decide because I've got a lot of the old NP. But if all of these have changed, who's next? Is armor going to change? Are they going to be forced to change their source? It's scary to me. It's um, and what will happen with the source that are only for compounders? Will they be forced to get the same horrible source? Right. It's up to you. I'm not going to criticize what anybody decides, but that's an option right now to do compounded. Um, number five, you can also do compounded T4 and T3, but get optimal. Oh, and by the way, um, I will, if I go the compounded route, I've had time to decide, I will not get slow release because mm, I've seen yeah. too many people over the 17 years complain about what it did. It ran out. I will get just regular and I will add, you know, I haven't decided yet. I could add curcumin. I could add acidophilus. I could add olive oil. I'm going to explore all that if I do that route. And I'm still going to take it twice a day. That's what I've always done. Yeah. Um, now, there's another option, I think, where I'm at in the count. Am I at six or seven? We're at six. Six. Okay. You, everybody, well, a lot of everybody, knows that there are over-the-counter brands. Uh, there are Thyrovans, Thyrogold. Yes. Um, I'm not going to even mention the ones you get in a health food store, because usually the ones at a health food store have other ingredients in them. So as you're raising your thyroid, you're also raising those other ingredients. There are also more players in the field trying to have just desiccated thyroid. I don't know about them. They just say, I don't know. I'm not want to cut anybody down who's produced it, but we know the tried and true of the exact same thing from bovine, that's cow, yeah, yeah. thyroid, from New Zealand. But even those can be problematic. Um, not everybody. There are a lot of people, for example, on thyrobands, there's a lot of people that soar. And if you want to try that, I'm behind you. Just be prepared that we have seen some people have very weird results. Not all, but you just have to be prepared for that. It could happen to you like it did happen to them. Thyrogold has been disappointing lately because there are bad batches and there are people that off and on through the years suddenly get hypothyroid. Mm -hmm. Now, Tammy has reported she's the one that Mm, distributes and owns Thyrogold that she's changing her distributor for porcine powder, uh, not porcine, uh, bovine. Bovine, That's yeah. probably a good thing because we've seen some instability in certain batches. So yes, you can do well on those. I would be prepared that you might get a bad batch. I would, if I, if I choose that route, I'm going to have some T3 on hand. Right. I will figure out a way. To, I, I will not just suddenly feel bad and have nothing. So that's me. And finally, um, there's the Thai brands. Now it, it is more and more fact that two of the three Thai brands are not being made anymore. Mm. That's TR, uh, T man, uh, excuse me. And T H I R O Y D thyroid. That's how they spelled it. They're not being made anymore. Will that change? We hope so. 
So all that's left is thyroid S and it worked great. But again, it's changing. Is it going to, no, it's not oh, now. Okay. But everybody else is getting this crap porcine somewhere. We think that's what it is. They is the Thai ones the ones that people are just ordering online? Yes. And you, and you can, and that does work. That still works. Yeah. I heard so Cinnamel. I think that's what it calls. Cinnamel, the Mexican one, T3. Um, I heard they quit producing that one. I know what Mel. Let's be careful talking about those though, Karen. Yeah. There's nothing the FDA wants more than to get rid of all of these. And they've done it before. Let's, mm -hmm. don't, let's just let that be a private conversation among patients. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> good call. Good call. Uh, okay. So we've got that. That so really, what it comes down to, Janie, is you have to be your own. You, you got to try these things out. You got to see what's going to work for you because there's so many different variations. So what is going to make you optimal is not going to be the same for the next person. Well, no, that's not necessarily true. Uh, the, Just for as, as type of medications, go. all of these work that I mentioned. If you get optimal, can there be some rare? Really, what what what's the 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 individuality more so is reaction to fillers right okay there's the individuality it's any of these can work for the vast majority of people if you get optimal not by how you feel because you're going to feel good before you're optimal but get optimal by your freeze um but let's look at those some um, that really do have some reactions to fillers that's mo mostly there's gray areas everywhere what the problem is right got it okay Phew. That's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> now, by the way, all of, the, all of those options um, on the Stop the Thyroid Madness blog, yeah. Stop the Thyroid Madness We've gone through blog, them. Not the latest blog post, which is hilarious about the American Thyroid Association. Oh my God. Oh, just imagine. <laughs> oh my God. But the one before that is the sad saga. It starts out with the sad saga. Um, okay. of That's the one where I talk about all the changes when they occurred. Mm -hmm. And then I give you options and all of those options are listed. Oh, great. Great. Okay. So moving on, I want to get into your newfound kind of information around the adrenals and the, the adrenals effect on the thyroid, which I think is, I mean, you tell me, I feel like that is the growing up. Like we see, we're seeing more and more women with hypothyroidism or at least a, a T3 issue, mm -hmm. a body temperature issue. Right. I mean, I don't know if I work with any women right now that don't have an underactive metabolism, which is really showing us it's adrenals and thyroid or possibly one, you know, one or the other. What's happening? You know, I, I personally, I cannot prove that there's a higher percentage today than there was when I started, but there could be. I think so. But there could be because I'm also around a lot of people that don't even have a thyroid problem, but um, it could be because we are definitely exposed to more chemicals than we used to be. We just can't avoid them. And just more stress, like, especially for women. I mean, I know it's way more common in women and then it's stress. We're doing too much and it's, it's the way we're eating. It's the chemicals. It's the heavy metals. There's so much influence. The stress is not necessarily causing the organic hypothyroidism that some of us get. What stress does is it pushes your RT3 up. Remember I said high cortisol? Is one of the causes of rising RT3. Well, stress, if you're under a lot of stress in our modern world, your RT3 is going to go up. And I call that kind of like secondary hypothyroidism. The higher your RT3 goes, the less T3 is going to get to your cells. And a lot of these people are put on Synthroid. And then later they said, I'm doing fine. Well, they don't have the organic, they don't have Hashimoto's, they don't have mold exposure that caused it, the damage, they don't have damage to the thyroid or genetic. They just have an RT3 cause. So really it's kind of like a secondary cause of, of hypothyroidism. And if you catch it quick enough, it can go away. I saw that happen to a former sister-in-law. Hers went away because she got out of her stress. Whereas a lot of us can't go, it can't go away. But yes, all those chemicals. And then you, uh, people with an auto, you know, I just wrote, brought out the book, Hashimoto's Taming the Beast. Mm -hmm. I wanted to bring it out sooner, but again, those four years of that mold illness, what it did to me. Uh, but uh, in there, you'll, you'll read about it, that if you have the underlying factor with most Hashimoto's is a genetic tendency to have autoimmune issues. That's, right. the, I mean, that's the bottom. But then you have all these, it's not EBV, but then you have, all, that's, 
Thank you. Yes. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. drink celery juice. <laughs> oh. Celery juice was known for years and years and years before it was stated by what's his name. But anyway, yeah, I know. <laughs> but when you have with that underlying, oh, I have a, a genetic autoimmune, autoimmune tendency, you have all these triggers. And the triggers are, are what brings it out. You've got mm -hmm. stress that can that bring out the autoimmune tendency. For most people, there might be some that don't have an autoimmune tendency, but or you can have a reaction to foods and um, illness. Um, all of those things can bring out Hashimoto's. So I think we're seeing an explosion of Hashimoto's even more so because yeah. of all and the chemicals, because of everything that's going on. Yeah. So how does cortisol affect oh. our T3? Yeah. You got to bring me back. Yeah. 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 Pulling my, you my back. Mind, my mind. Oh, and this and this. Yeah, yeah. And this and this. It's great. This. I love it. It's okay. That's just the way I feel. Okay. What is really going on with the majority of people is their hypothyroidism causes an adrenal problem. Mm. It's not the other way around. Hypo, in other words, if you're on T4, your risk is high, you're going to get an adrenal problem because you're inadequately treated. Um, if, if you're um, not even diagnosed yet and the doctor keeps going by the TSH, your risk is high, you're going to get an adrenal problem. If you're on one of these lousy NDTs, your risk is high, you're gonna get an adrenal problem. If you're on a good NDT, but you didn't get optimal, your risk goes up that you're gonna get an adrenal problem. Why is that? Well, <clears throat> our adrenals are like our, our shining knights. I wrote that in the book. They're like our shining knights on their horse trying to protect us. They're always trying to protect us. And the way they first try to protect us is raise cortisol. Like if you're, if you're undiagnosed for years or you're undertreated or you've got a lot of other things wrong, oh, let's raise your cortisol to keep her going or him going. So the cortisol is going to go up. That's normal. But what happens is because you don't, uh, you don't get treated for your hypothyroid or you're poorly treated or you've got all these chemicals, it stays high way too long. Your, your, your adrenals was trying hard to work for you, but it stays high too long. So then there's a mechanism, which is the last chapter of the STEM2 book, by the way, there's these mechanisms where your body is going to bring the cortisol down to save you from the bad effects of high cortisol. So all your levels are gonna start falling. And now you've got low cortisol from the body's way to protect you from that long-term high cortisol as a result of all these issues that are affecting you. Now you've got it even worse. Now you've got low cortisol, which is even harder to treat. Yes. Oh, is it ever. <laughs> and it's not, it's not adrenal fatigue. It's that your body down regulates cortisol because it can't keep it up there like that. It can't keep going. So that I think that that's something that still is mistaken right now is that they, you, people think the adrenals tire out, which is not the case. It's, well, it's a mechanism. A it still fits. You know, don't get, don't get adrenal fatigue. Yeah. Adrenal fatigue is not, the adrenals do get tired because they, they do down regulate. You're right. I mean, yeah. technically you're right. But they are, it is kind of- It's it, kind of like a fatigue because you've been wearing them out and they're like, this is too much. I yeah, got to downregulate. Yeah, it still fits, you know, because yeah. you're, 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 your body says enough is enough of all these stresses and so it downregulates -reg itself. So it, it really adrenal fatigue fits, but the, the last chapter in the STEM2 book, I think she has five reasons that she speculates causes that to go down. Mm. Why it's such a great chapter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's stress, infection. There's so many things that can downregulate. Or... And remember, when you're bombarded, your cortisol is going to go up, but it's not meant to stay up for a long period of time, and now it's going to drop. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. Now you've got more to treat. Yeah, and I hear so often, all the time, I hear naturopaths, not all naturopaths, but just I'm, uh, there's a lot of people talking, doctors, naturopaths, saying that you have to fix the adrenals before you fix the thyroid. Well, you do. You, you don't have to fix them. You have to treat what's wrong. Um, that's a mistake. You know, you, when your cortisol is low, you cannot bring it up. Why can you not, just naturally, why can you not bring it up naturally? Because you can't get out of your hypothyroid state with low cortisol. You have to give yourself cortisol to enable thyroid hormones to get to the cells. Nice. You see, yeah. you have to be on it for certain cases. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the light case, that's why you've got to do a saliva test. You yeah. know, in the early years, we, were, we heard of blood cortisol and we were hearing of saliva. Believe it or not, even in 2002, we were hearing of it. And we were doing both. 
Um, and what happened in the early years is the blood cortisol would show one thing and the saliva would show something else. And our symptoms fit what saliva was showing. Uh -huh. Not all cases, but a lot. There's always those gray areas. And we learned early on, we didn't know why. Oh, we can't do blood. Because some people were saying it was high, but their symptoms fit low and saliva proved low and vice versa. It was only later we found out that blood is measuring what's mostly bound. You know, they're bound to proteins. It's, it, it, you won't be able to use it when it's bound. That's what blood ma measures, 80% or more. So that's not telling us what's, what are we getting or what are we not getting. Yeah. And plus, it was only one time a day. So we kind of learned strongly beginning about three years after I started this movement or earlier, saliva, saliva, and you've got to treat what that saliva shows. And that's where I'm, I'm can I say I'm proud? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just, oh, yeah. I'm proud of myself for listening. Mm -hmm. And I gathered chapters five and six in the updated revision now, it's even better now than the book you have. I updated it to include a lot more information about who can use adrenal cortex versus who has to use hydrocortisone. How do we dose it? How do we find the right amount? I tweaked a lot. There's a lot of changes, updates, and I had to remove some things in chapters five and six, and we do it safely. Thus, Karen, you can imagine how I felt when I had to find a new doctor because my good one left town. And I said to him, hey, I happened, I was on hydrocortisone at that time because of a lot of stress in my life. Hey, I, I, um, first of all, let me back up. I said, hey, I'm doing well and my TSH is below range. That's very normal for me. I do not have bone loss. I'm doing great. Would you accept that if, if you became my doctor? Oh no, no, it's dangerous for the TSH to be below range. You'll have heart disease. Oh. And then I said, well, I'm also on hydrocortisone for the moment because of all the stress I've been under. It was really bad. And will you accept that? And I, and I know how to be on the right amount. I don't say I'm Janie Bothart, I've written the books, but I just say I know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh no, you could permanently harm your adrenals. Oh, so it's, it's hard out there. What's your take on the Cortef actually? Am I, can I ask that? Like just because going through my own experience and, and coming across a lot of information that said, if you do go the Cortef route that you need to be doing a full replacement, basically, like you need to be on the higher end of the dosing in order to fully replace it. Because if you're on just a little bit, it'll actually damage the cortisol levels more. All amounts of Cortef, which by the way is man-made hydrocortisone, <clears throat> excuse me, or man-made cortisol, all amounts starting approximately 7.5 milligrams an hour, that's where we really see it, is gonna suppress what little production you were still making. That's normal. Um, so as a result, you've got to find the amount because you're suppressing what little amount you were making, which it wasn't going to work anyway. You've got to find the right amount for your daily physiologic needs. So we had to learn that early on because early on we were starting on low amounts and, mm -hmm. and going up and that was miserable because it's, 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 re it's repressing more than replacing, suppressing more suppressing, than replacing. Yeah. So then we saw over time that, huh, most women started finding their optimal physiologic, the amount their body needs around 25 milligrams. And some have to go a little higher. Oh, okay. So let's, let's decide that women should start on 25 because that's where they found their right amount. Men start higher. Most mm -hmm. men start on 30 because that's where they were starting to find their right amount. And we learned how to find the right amount. That's all in chapter six of the updated revision. Great. And, we, and that is your, that's not a pharmacological amount. My doctor was talking about 40 and 50 milligrams, which I used to do. I wasn't doing that. That's what I was doing, what my body tells me it needs by doing my daily average temps and my, my symptoms. Yeah. Let's talk about the other influence from other, other hormones. Um, we know that when there's a lot of cortisol going up, and even then when it goes down, it puts an impact on your progesterone levels because you need progesterone basically as a precursor to making cortisol. So we'll see a lot of women with progesterone deficiency. How does that impact your thyroid? Does progesterone have, um, like, a, and estrogen, I know estrogen dominance does, but what about progesterone, DHEA, testosterone? Do those impact thyroid function as well? Not in everybody. Yeah. You would think so because progesterone can convert to cortisol, 
but that's implying that every single woman that, that you know perimenopausal for a lot of women is a diving of the progesterone first that's why they get estrogen dominance and then they enter into menopause and now the estrogen dies well if that was true for all of them we'd all have have an adrenal problem i didn't have an adrenal problem and mine all died um, but what we did notice is that progesterone can convert to cortisol does that mean you can supplement with progesterone and correct your low cortisol? We haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. It improves it, but it doesn't give you back what you need. Is that, progesterone, does it impact thyroid function? Again, if that was the case, every single uh, perimono, perimenopausal person would be hypothyroid. Right. And they're not. Um, it just kind of depends on the individual, what that's going to do to your mm -hmm. endocrine system. Does that make sense? Yeah, I see. I just know that it's a very common thing for women to go in through perimenopause and then develop hypothyroidism. So oh. I just am like, what is the connection here? Well, that, that, that's what I'm saying. That's the other side of the coin. There are some women that become very high. There are women that become hypothyroid at the birth of a baby. And yeah. there are women that become hypothyroid when their sex hormones get messed up. I'm just saying it's not all. It's not a block. No, it's it's not all. No, it's no. Some. It didn't happen to me. Now, when I finally went, guess what? When I finally went through menopause, I had depression for nine months. And I had to take uh, five HTP and I had to go up to like eight or nine. I can't remember. I forgot how many, you know, to, to get out of that depression. Was I more hypothyroid? I never tested to find out because I've been so busy, but I wonder. But I snapped yeah. out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you, it, in some women, the declining sex hormones in some women can affect your hypothyroid state, just like giving babies can affect your hypothyroid state. Mm -hmm. So it's worth it during those times to test your free T3, your free T4, and your RT3, and treat what you're seeing with the possibility that not everybody is gonna remain hypothyroid. They may be able to treat these things and it goes away, but it's mm -hmm. individual. What do you see being the thing that kind of impacts that the most, like hypothyroidism, what's triggering it besides genetics? Like if, so, if it's not genetics, where are you seeing what's triggering? Not in Hashimoto's, we know, yes, it's diet, it's genetics as well. So I'm talking like just someone's not converting or is it inflammation? Is it stress? Is it a combination of it all? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you look at my page called Causes of Hypo on the website, there's so many. Yeah. These are all known causes and experienced by people. I, you know what? I used to think that I somehow I got it because my mother had Graves disease and I had the opposite. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I don't even think she was autoimmune Graves. Yeah. <clears throat> there's even, there's even Graves disease, not autoimmune because she never had any other autoimmune disease, nothing. And my family doesn't have any autoimmunity. Um, who knows? But I was wrong. All those years I thought, well, it's just the opposite side of the coin. I got hypo. I now finally get it. That bedroom, and especially that bedroom closet was high in mold. Oh. And I think it was a mold exposure that did it to me. I bet. So there's one example, and I list a ton. You know, EBV is not the only cause. It can be some cause. Um, <clears throat> illness can be causes. There can be people that have temporary. Um, genetics can be a cause. And, and we finally had to say, maybe it's all the chemicals. Maybe that's, mm -hmm. if, if you had a graph, a circle, and you had little pie shapes. Yes, yes. Maybe chemicals is the largest pie shape. Right. Yep. Yep. Heavy metals. I think yeah. mine's heavy metals, for sure. Yeah. And I see that more often now, yeah, too. Heavy metals going to destroy, play a role in starting to destroy your thyroid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crazy. <sighs> okay. So we've got three books. Is that correct? <laughs> Let's go through them. We've got this one, the revised. I, I almost. But we want the updated. I, I wish I could. Can I? Can I get out of the screen and get the book? Get it? Yes, okay. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's good. The book. Just so you guys know, there is. You know, there's a couple people that were like big instrumental pieces in my own thyroid journey. And this book was one of them. It was like my Bible. I went to it a million times over. So this, uh, Al Russ's book, Paul Robinson's book, those are my three go-to books that uh, I, I really think every person that has a thyroid issue has to have this, 100%. Well, or, it, or the new one, the new one, sorry. Show us the new well, one, Janie. That one is still good. 
Okay. That was really the second one. The first one, I, I didn't know what I was doing. And right. I had, you know, I, I wasn't a, an author and I, I've since kind of become better at it, but it had to be updated too. Uh, so there was one in 2011 and the one you, you are showing up is, is a 2011 book. I did some updates in early 2012, but, um, and it's been good. Um, but boy, we've learned a lot. So I knew I felt better. Finally, I got to get this done. So this is the new one. And the, the importance of this um, is especially the adrenal chapters, because yeah. that is where the, I mean, when you open this book, the chapter titles are the same. I worked hard to keep the pages the same as far as the length of each chapter. I did that so I could keep the same ISBN. So it, at first glance, you can think, well, this isn't any different. No, it is. They all start the same, but there's, there's certain things removed. Like I had to remove the mention of isocort, um, which was a, a plant-based right. result. I had to update our information about ingredients. Now, <clears throat> since it's come out, every desiccated thyroid except armor you know, doesn't work anymore. So, but, but luckily, it's almost like I had a little bit of ESP. In, every, in, the, in the natural thyroid hormones chapter, I constantly mentioned T4 and T3. <clears throat> they, unlike what your doctor said, they can work if you get optimal. Right. Uh, maybe you didn't know about getting people optimal. I don't know, but, but no, he there's does. a lot of updates in here. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, that's, that's what it is. That's what it looks like. Awesome. And so that's available on your site and on Amazon, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Janie, I have about a million other questions for you, but we are out of time. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, I could talk to you all day, but oddly enough, I'm actually on my way to my naturopath to talk about my change of dosing for thyroid. I'm not joking. I am. <laughs> Make sure you get optimal. I know. I'm like, okay, I'm going to change things up. I'm going to go talk to him. So actually I have an appointment right after this. So now I'm going to be really refreshed but what to ask for. But thank you so much for coming on the show. So if people want, you know, if, if you guys don't know about Stop the Thyroid Madness, head on over there. You can spend oh, weeks looking at the information. It's, it's, it's a go-to source. So thank you so much for everything that you've done, Janie. I appreciate you so much for what you've done for my life and the millions of others that are suffering with hypothyroidism. You're very welcome. <laughs>